Welcome, everyone. Adam the Woo here as a recording of this TGIF. It is Friday, June the 30th, 2023. I am in Apache Junction, about 30, 40 miles outside Phoenix, Arizona, in the 100 plus degree uncloudy temperatures, not a cloud in the sky. I am going to be heading over to Goldfield Ghost Town, which I have heard good things about. It's just about five miles up the road. Stopping off here, going to get some waters and other assorted things. Possibly a piping hot caffeinated beverage. Yes, even though it is post 100 degree temperatures, I still like a warm coffee in the mornings. But check this out. I have this mural right here of a bull rider and some cowboys. You got a spaceship over there and this very interesting little town next to the Hitching Post Saloon. An old West Village. Got the cantina, got the barbershop, got a classic car alert right over here. This little storage facility. A feed and seed, cafe, mining supply. I'm inviting you, as always, to join me. Also wearing an appropriate t-shirt. Mount Sperry Farm. Sad Eye Joe was with me on the back of the tee. They have a ghost town at Knott's, so I figured I'd wear one here in Arizona. Join me, shall you? There's the post office. You can get a hot bath for 10 cents. Clean water is extra, according to the sign. And back in 1897, Nothing happened. Look at this view. Look at that. What an angle. The Hitching Post Village right here. The mountains. It's like something out of a movie. If we can't bail you out, we'll put you down. Bail bond and Undertaker in one place. Assay office. It's a beautiful area, but it is hot. 100 degrees, it's gonna get up to 104. I don't know how all those old prospectors could handle it back in the day, but I guess if that's what you're used to, you get acclimated to it. All right, turns out the Hitching Post Pizza and Pub is not, in fact, a grocery store or a convenience store of any sort. Walked inside and pretty good theming though, but it's just basically a bar, a really well themed Western bar. As you kind of peruse in there, there's a lot of really cool items. And there were a few people in there wetting their whistle. The old West Highway, where history still lives, where the sign is on the front of the building as well. The old West. have made it. Goldfield Ghost Town and Mine Tour. And it states right here on the side of this. It says airmail. That funnel there. I've also been to a lot of these types of towns that were not converted into theme park style attractions. This one has been and is kept up, repurposed and utilized, still kicking. Established 1893, the old water tank. Ooh, I hear a train. There's a train over there. The old water tower I just passed. I like it already. Go ahead and take a look at the pamphlet I got at my hotel, staying in Phoenix. It was about probably a 45 minute commute. Valley's only authentic ghost town, Scenic Railroad, Mine Tours, Journey Back to the Authentic 1980s Old West, Family Fun, all the different features, all the different stores. They're open every day, 10 to 5. This is an authentic 1890s site, 
hazardous conditions as you would have uneven walking surfaces, rocks, hills, steep drop-offs, old wooden sidewalks, porches, steps, steeps, railings, timber splinters. And this place was obviously around way before they ever expected vehicles to be pulling in and new cars parking in the lot over here. Now this is designated Peterson's Mercantile, the old shop, the merchandise shop. Treasures old and new, candy shop, and homemade Fudge. Oh, it goes way up the side of the hill. That's the apothecary. They got some a grill over there. They got some ice cream over there. Yeah, up on the side of the hill here. The water tower. Yeah, this is way better than I expected it to be. I kind of stayed spoiler free. I saw the flyer. Didn't look too much stuff up. But this is really awesome. Pretty great. They got the hat shop over here. You got the little cart down here as well. This is maybe the stagecoach line. Again, I believe in the winter time or when it's not in the heat of summer, they do like a show out here, like an old showdown, like a high noon type thing. Definitely getting some Hill Valley 1885 vibes through here. Look, wouldn't be surprised if Buford Mad Dog Tannen walks up. When I am alerted that a train ride is about to happen, I will come a call in very, very quickly. Take a look at this. This is dedicated to the unknown prospector. And this is not a joke. Snake alert. Don't touch this snake. If you see the snake, tell a staff member. Or just hightail it and get the heck out of Dodge. All right, over in the gift shop, for $12, you can do each of three different things. There's the mystery shack, the mine tour, and the train, the mystery shack, and the mine tour. Those are the three. But for $30, so you save a couple of dollars each, $30 you get all three. So this is for the train, this is for the mystery shack, and this is for the mine tour. And here's a general layout of the land right here of all the different things. So it looks like there are three, it's free admission to get in, but there are three different items that you can do that you must pay for or you can get, you know, all three of them for $30. Yeah. And here's a, it's an old mine, miniature version here. The Union Pacific, the Lehigh Valley. So this celebrates a 100th anniversary of a rescue as a man that was trapped in the mine for two weeks. Here's a photo of the town back in 1897, right here on the 4th of July. James Stevens. That's who it was right there, James Stevens. And then 10 days after he got out of the mine, there he is right there. If you're gonna rob a train, you need one of these. Of course, after two, the events of 2020, these have a different connotation, you know, because people were using those for different, different purposes. section, kind of like the middle section of Jungle Cruise, where you don't have the backing or anything, so you just kind of sit in the middle with everyone else. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> this Conductor, brake man, gate man, tour guide, chief, 
cook and bottle washer. Feel free to stand up and turn around at any time during the trip. It's about 5,000 feet above sea level up on the top there. And geologists tell us that it was formed 30 million years ago at the edge of a volcanic caldera. 250 square miles of federally protected wilderness area. And now a little bit about these big tall cactus with all the arms that you see all around the town. There's a few of them coming up on the right side there. They only grow here in the Sonoran Desert. They can live to be 250 years old and they don't grow their first arm until they're 50 to 80 years old. Coming up on the left side, these weird looking cactus with all the green fruit hanging off them are called chain fruit choya. And if you, if you look closely, you'll see bird nests up among the thorns on those things. I'll never understand how they can build those nests without stabbing themselves to death. This is an old steel head frame from the early 1900s. They would pull the ore up out of the mine shaft in that bucket and then dump the bucket down that chute to fill up the ore car. Cannot, exp <coughs> cannot express how much I love Also this. off to the right side, out by that old dump truck, the Mammoth is the second of those four big underground mines. And it was by far the largest and most productive of all the mines out here. It was also the deepest. The main shaft at the Mammoth went down 1,058 feet below the third lane and come out here with their big set shovels and scrape and scratch at the surface, never more than 10 feet down. And they would gather what ore they could get and then they would have to move on and try to find another claim. And that's what really started the gold boom out here at Goldfield was the underground mining because it was a lot more efficient and more profitable than the surface mining was. Down with the superstition mountains in the background. The prospecting actually started out here in the 1880s, but very few people were brave enough to come out here and try their hand at it because Apache raids were still happening back then and this was not a safe place to be. But by 1891, the raids had pretty much stopped and word had gotten back to town about, or back to civilization about the gold strikes out here. And people just started flooding into the town. They had the mercantile store and a livery shop, or livery stable and a blacksmith shop and a butcher shop, and a bakery, and a barber shop, and even a one-room schoolhouse for the kids. The population at that point was up around 1,500 people. And of those, about 500 or so were the miners and their families. But the miners and their families didn't actually live in the town. They lived all around the town, out here in the surrounding desert, in canvas walled tents. It was a tough way to make a living, but it was good money if you stuck at it and worked hard. And eventually they had to decide that there was nothing more they could do for the mine. And the only option they had left was just to shut it down and walk away from it. All three of those remaining underground mines ran into that same underground aquifer, and one by one they all flooded and also had to shut down. So all of a sudden things were looking really bad for the town because all the underground miners left, and the surface miners had scraped up about all the surface that they had legal claims for, so they started taking off. So they all started closing up their shops and packing up and moving out, and before you know it, there was almost nobody left out here. And one day the folks at the post office must have looked out the front door and said, hey, there's nobody left out here. Only five years after it had opened at the top of the boom, Goldfield Post Office shut down and Goldfield officially became a ghost town. And we're just about back to the station now, so I'd like to thank you all for riding along with us today. That was just the kind of attraction that I love. Perfect. It's a classic train ride around a ghost town. So my first impressions, I should say, you don't really need to go overboard with stuff to make it entertaining. And that's just kind of what I think a lot of times you go to like theme parks and stuff and I think they try a little too hard for, you know, just in my opinion. Then again, I'm just, you know, I know what I like, but sometimes 
just something just standard like this and pretty basic just does the trick. This is just so good. I'm gonna do the mine tour next. Ooh, I wonder if it's the blacksmith. Awesome. Oh, look at this. No, I think I am gonna go down with a guide. I have traded in one of the paper tickets for what he referred to as the guide is gonna take us down at 12.50, so it's in five minutes, as a stick ticket. <laughs> so he's like, you gotta have the stick ticket. So I got a stick ticket, and I'm ready to rock down in the, down in the mine. It's like you can pan for gold over here. as well. I think part of the reason I love Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland and at Magic Kingdom is because it's themed around this era. And I love Knott's Berry Farm, Ghost Town at Knott's. Walter Knott went out to the desert and took a bunch of old buildings that were basically just gonna kind of rot away and created a theme park out of them. Genius. Some of the old tools of the trade. Definitely see you would need a big brimmed hat out here. Here's folks, one ride with coming up. Oh. All right, that is a five minute call to the uh, next mine tour going down. It's the old outhouse here. I think there's someone in the outhouse. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> What's going on? going on in there? Excuse me, I'll get past you so we can get out of this. <laughs> All right. Looks like we're here. So first off, once you get off your elevator, you'll be met with this uh, complete darkness. Not We have electricity back here, but this is all new to us right now. Plus the air conditioning is kind of nice down here. But once you get off the elevator, you can start by uh, getting your tools and your equipment your helmets, things like that, sledgehammers, everything you might need to start your day down in a mine. You gather all that, and uh, you start out with your main tools. Right here we got our drill bits, or star bit, the miners called it. They would use this to do most of their drilling. These things are much more important to them, but still very dangerous. Uh, these things had uh, the nickname of the Widowmaker. They had that because they had a, the tendency to uh, decapitate miners back in the day because they're very unwieldy and had a chance to blow back if you hit something hard into the rock. All right, guys. So, as I was talking about those drill bits right there, they'd be using uh, those to drill holes into the wall. And these are the, the holes here that you would be drilling. This is called the 21 stretch, 21 holes to be filled with dynamite. One to five sticks of dynamite per hole, seven, feet uh, deep practically around that. So one to five sticks of dynamite per hole. They make a horseshoe shape, kind of like this, very specifically because it was uh, designed to implode on itself. They had this one left unfilled in the middle, called the relief hole. This would cause the uh, dynamite to implode in a certain way that would cause the ore to come rushing out in a sort of tidal wave and softly uh, push itself right into the middle of the mine here so that you could get to it easier. You'd be mucking it into the ore carts like that. That uh, would hold about a ton of ore right there. So that mine cart they used, once they filled it up, roll it on up the elevator we came down in, 
put it on up to the top. Honey Wagon had a special name because the man wheeling it around was known as the Honey Dipper. Oh, oh wow. And we give this little ladle here to be uh, scooping it out, I guess you could say. It's a toilet. Uh, pretty bad job, but uh, they got paid a dollar less than a normal miner. That's uh, pretty bad. But um, yeah, this is known as the Honey Wagon. Yeah, they reeled this thing around the uh, mine, offering its services to anyone who may need it. This is a very important job because uh, this is all you have. And in complete darkness, candles. Uh, uh, that's kind of all you had because there was no electricity down here, of course. Just candlelight like this. So this is all you'd see. And this is all you'd have. The only source of light you had down here at the mine. You have to set it up in a very strategic and safe place there. Because you, of course, didn't want it to go out. You want it to be very safe. Probably working on the opposite side of the mine wall over there. Pickaxing, uh, drilling, things like that. You don't want Because this is all you have. And this is what you might see. bigger than this because this is where all the gold and the mining would be taking place. Most of it would be. But uh, also be filled with tons so, uh, of it had to be very safe. But they had no tail or nails or screws for a specific reason because uh, with all this uh, mine detonation and blowing up of dynamite, things like that, and the plus you're underground, the earth is moving, uh, mm -hmm. you don't want these things to be snapping or breaking at all. So this is why they had no nails or screws because you wanted to do it. So the guide was explaining this is what they used to siphon all that water out from the flooding back in the day. I had AC down there. I can already feel the heat starting to emulate through this tunnel now. Back up, back up top. Mystery shack. This is probably one of those type of houses that kind of threw your equilibrium off. I'm your host for today. Welcome to Goldfield, Arizona, and welcome to the Mystery Shack. It's where the hills are steep, the thrills are cheap, and the abnormal is absolutely normal. For your safety, all you gotta do around these parts is wash your feet and wash your hands. Hold on to handrails and lean on banisters, you may do that. Otherwise, you could do a little silly trip, stumble, and fall, in which you will say hello to that ceiling, the floor, or the wall. If you want to follow up here, the center way, you may do so. Be sure you hold on to the rope and not the metal because it's Arizona. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. You know what helps cool me down? Taking a nice little drink of water right here. I'm joking, I'm an alcoholic. That's all I drink <laughs> is whiskey and wine, things like that. And well, I did read in the book one time, you could take this stuff right here and make it into the wine. Frankly, I'd like to talk to the guy that did it because I think I'm onto something, but not quite. Oh. Because, sorry, not sorry, I broke the laws of reality here. But hey, that's completely fine if you feel a little weird inside the shack because the water in your body makes you feel like that. And on this hot summer day, you should be drinking plenty of water because you don't want to get, well, passed out in the shack. Because that means I may have to throw you down a mine shaft. So much. Though I will admit, I play a little differently than some others. You see, I'm a little bit more hands-on with the game, and 
So even that, you know, few sticks works for me. They can be used as butter. And also, I feel like I'm slanted. I'm not sitting straight. Really? I In a place my... like this? I don't see it. Throw my equilibrium off a little bit. No. I can't tell you. If you do want to get out of that chair, there's a good way to do it. You can get out lazily or properly. How do you choose? Properly. You're going to put your feet in front of you. The hands on the lap. Get up like properly like that. I don't think I can. I'll give it a try. I am not that strong. Give it a try. Give it a try. Come on. Come on. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Alright, you wanna be lazy? Take them one of the legs of yours, swing them right over here, and then you can get up out of the chair. No problem at all. Wow. That is wild. Alright. And if you are wanting to come on up to the bookshelf, you can do that. get a nice little view up there and then if you want I can take a camera and show you what you look like up there. Alright, so I'm just going this way? Yep, all the way. Wow. Okay. Stand up tall straight, do walk your head a little bit. The miner was 4 foot 13, a bit of a different height than most folks these days. Okay. Hey, well, how do you feel up there? I feel tall. Well, knowledge will take the new heights. You want to see how you look right over here? Yeah, let's see. And there you go. Well, you look at that. I think you look all smart and snazzy up there. Thank you. Smart enough to be able to deal with this right over here. Oh, would you look at that, folks? The balls are all in, no problem at all. There you go. But you know what ain't unbearable? Walking across this bridge right here. This is mine, chef number two. Classified a bottomless pit, the name fits. Mine's been digging it since 1893, the year the town was founded. 130 years of digging straight down means it's a long way to fall down. So, for your safety, we put a bridge right here oh and multiple gosh. layers of glass. Now, these glasses are only the regular kind, not the safety kind, so please don't step on them. You crack it, you break it, you either fall down for quite a bit, or worse yet, you make a down payment for a new piece of glass. Quadruple that rate. Yeah, all the guides here have been awesome. Usually I'm not big on guided tours, but all three of the guides have been great. The guy off the train, the guy in the mine, sh mine shaft, and the guy in the mystery shack. Now back over down the main drag, if you will. This says Bad Water Springs. Don't drink. Do not drink from Bad Water Springs. Ooh, even with a old-fashioned dinner bell right up there. And it is open. Coffee and bakery. And this kind of sums up what Arizona and this greater Phoenix area feels like right now. An oven. I mean, it literally feels like an oven. Might be high caffeinated beverage in the Old West. Acquired. I also bought another bottle of water. Got it in my back pocket. Coffee and water. And Western Town. Blueprint Mammoth Mine. That's 1911 is the blueprint there. Okay. Uh, they did pull out 12,000 pounds of gold within uh, the first five years in the 1890s. And they ended up. Uh, Hitting the groundwater, the, the large soccer fur in the area. It's right. the second It's a very faint scar. It looks like a scratch on it. Okay. And that's from South Dakota. This is a megalodon tooth from Florida. There's a picture of the meg down below it. Oh, yeah. The white, great white below it. And then there's a spinosaurus tooth from Morocco next to some saber tooth bones. I think there's things in there. So feel free to take pictures. Thank you. There's um, meteorite material on the right. Marine fossils too, and some minerals as well. So enjoy. Okay, thank you. So this little museum is eight dollars. So everything has a separate fee. There's some cliff dwellings over here that were in the superstitious mountains.
the old telegraph station. Oh, look at this, American Morse code. Smoking tobacco. Those cool cigarettes, old gold cigarettes, treasure of them all. It looks to be that they have an 1886 Brunswick bar over there too. 100 year old shirt spotted with wax from his only light, a candle. A lot of times you'll look at this kind of stuff and you just think, oh, this is just like stuff. But this is how people lived, how people worked, and what they had. This was like modern technology for the time. his head down there. Look at that gold bar, gold be a gold field gold bar. 76 pounds representing a two-day production at the Mammoth Mine at its peak. That's that information has that written there. It's a lot to see in this town. And if you start trouble around these parts, they're gonna lock you up and throw away the key. Well, they probably won't throw the key away, but they might put you in here, in the jail. Oh, what? I'm told they hold that rest of the more secret than the location of No, it's not Pappy. It's Jacob Nothing Waltz, the lost free. Dutchman. Give shares his secrets for a dollar. To the location of my mind. Hello there. He's the sheriff of Goldfield. Hey there, partners. Welcome to Goldfield Ghost Town. I didn't put the dollar in yet. I didn't put the Dutchman. I didn't put well, the two dollars. The dollar. Here, here we go. Come on over here. I'm coming now, over. I'll tell you how to find now. Where were we? Where were we? Uh, yes, I remember. Head back to the mouth of the canyon and then back again. You'll find my rock house there. After you get there, come back out of the canyon to find my mine. I've covered my mine with timber. I went in there. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to welcome you too. Goldfield Ghost Town here in Arizona, right at the foot of the Superstition Mountains. Highly recommend. Oh, that sound you hear right now. That is the actual whistle of the hoist that the men used to hear, the exact same one they used to hear 130 years ago to go down over a thousand feet into the ground, try to pull gold out of this place at $20 an ounce. They risked their lives for this, but in the 1890s, maybe $20 an ounce was worth risking your life. 
lot of people to this day still risk their lives out here, out here in the middle of the Arizona desert, where right now it's about 108 degrees, gonna get hotter. Is it 108? And, oh my gosh. Yeah, and the foot of those superstition mountains, just behind this great big two-story building over here, which is supposed to be a cursed mountain. An old Apache cursed. When they warned people not to dig here, they did it anyway, and since then there's been all kinds of treachery and spooky shenanigans going on in this desert as well in this town so you got to be a little extra careful when you're walking out here but tons of history out here where we're standing it was very cool that adam came out to see this because this place has a lot to say a lot to see a lot for you to do tours in the mine tours in the, uh, the buildings over here that some of them i think i've shops. done i think i've done all of them except yeah. for the bordello tour i was looking forward to that yeah unfortunately that one's closed today yeah. i happen to have the key to it but that's a that's a different tour <laughs> but uh but yeah. yeah. You do a nighttime tour as well, right? A nighttime tour, which even gets to go in that bordel. That's actually where I got my key. But at night, I actually host the official Goldfield Ghost Tour. All right. You might learn more about those curses in those mountains and uh, some of the uh, actual spooky shenanigans that go around this place at night. It's a very different place out here. I bet. Dark, I bet. For sure. Is that a squirrel? It is. It's a ground squirrel. And the, uh, are kind of numerous out here. And they've learned that uh, they're adorable enough to get fed, so they stick around. A ground squirrel. Mm -hmm. Look at that little, like a little chipmunk. A little chipmunk. It's a squirrel, ground squirrel. What I'm gonna call it a chipmunk because it looks like a chipmunk. It's essentially the same thing. It's basically the Arizona desert version of the chipmunk. <laughs> Strike it out of the bordello. <laughs> but if you if you uh, plan it ahead. You go on the a go family the friendly bordello for the most part i mean it depends on your guide but yeah yeah supposed to be friendly. you know you tip them well they might uh it, it, it goes off the rails yeah <laughs> behind the scenes behind the curtain you don't want if you tip good in a bordello yeah. it could all it could go yeah. a different way all about the tip. and there's even a tattoo shop here in the town around the back tattoos and pierce dipped in ink tattoo shop and there's also a live reptile Exhibit Arizona's largest live display. Ooh, I looked down there for a second. That was a snake. <laughs> My peripheral vision. I <laughs> like escaping. Which actually the door says closed. Unfortunately, that's a bit of a I'm not going to complain too much about not seeing cobras or rattlesnakes or vipers. <laughs> so it's fine. I like how under five is free. Mm -hmm. So any of the any of the youngins can really get. It's because they're edible. They're <laughs> And then uh, half the time you don't have to pay the money to see it. You walk far enough out there, you're bound to see these things all on your own. Especially those rattlesnakes. No thanks. No, I don't like snakes. <laughs> and one day I have to come back under the shroud of nightfall for Fear Frontier presents the Gold Fear. Gold Field. I almost said Gold Fear. The Gold Field Ghost Tour. Both are appropriate. Go, both full of fear. Two things out here, gold and fear. There's gold and fear. You can guarantee out of here. going to do it for today from Goldfield, Arizona, established 1893 at Old West Mining Town next to the Superstition Mountains. So much history. Very, very cool. Highly recommend checking this place out. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.